name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. This past Friday, more than 100,000 Americans assembled in our nation's capital as they have year after year after year for nearly five decades. They gather together in prayer and in peaceful public protest at the annual March for Life. And yet, while there were more than 100,000 present, much of the mainstream media ignored the event completely, and one source reported that more than 1,000 were present for this march. I guess you could reduce that down and say that there were more than 10, and it would be a true statement, but it would be fake news, wouldn't it? So 100,000 plus traveled from across the United States to be at our nation's capital as a public witness of our unending, untiring efforts to reverse the legalization of abortion in the United States of America. Vice President Pence and President Trump spoke as well via a recording. And what the president said could and should be said from every pulpit in every church in this nation. President Trump said, when you look into the eyes of a newborn child, you see the beauty and the human soul and the majesty of God's creation. The beauty, the human soul, and the majesty of God's creation. And you know, we're still in the season of Christmas tide, at least in the traditional calendar. And within the past uh, days and weeks in our Advent and Christmas readings, we followed the start of life, human life, of two individuals within the wombs of their mothers, St. John the Baptist and our Lord Jesus Christ. Drawing from St. Luke's Gospel, we know that the archangel appeared to the priest Zechariah, who would become the father of John the Baptist and announced the birth that would take place and the conception before that, and further announced that even in the womb of his mother, John would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Non-humans are not filled with the Holy Spirit. That belongs only to the souls of human beings. And in the visitation of the two mothers, Mary and Elizabeth, we are told that even in the womb of his mother, St. John the Baptist leapt when he came into the presence of the unborn Christ. And in that moment, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Clearly, John the Baptist was a human being and was already preparing the way of the Lord while in the womb of his mother. And so to our Lord, the archangel announced to the Blessed Mother that she was to become the mother of our Lord. And in the moment that she gave her fiat, let it be so, by the power of the Holy Spirit, she conceived the Son of Man in her womb, who was and is fully God and fully man. Yes, these are events that we celebrated. We celebrated not just the birth, but we celebrate the moment that Christ was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate also 
John the Baptist, his precursor, his life in the womb and his life in the world. Folks, we are dealing with the supernatural, the preternatural, and the natural. In the creation of every human being, there is the natural cooperation between the parents to biologically bring about a child. But there is also the supernatural act by which God creates an immortal soul in the body of that uh, newly formed human life. A soul that will never, ever go out of existence. So the conception of every child, regardless of the circumstances of the conception, is endowed with an immortal soul. But there are preternatural forces at work that seek to destroy the life and destroy souls and to thereby act absolutely contrary to and in defiance of the creative and the redeeming acts of God. With every abortion that takes place, there is the loss of the life of a child that will never have the opportunity to be baptized. God creates us to be born into this world, to know and love him in this life and serve him and to be with him in eternity. And we are joined and given supernatural life, joined to the Holy Trinity in baptism. Every abortion is a victory for Satan. It deprives a human life of the saving sacrament of baptism. And with every abortion, those who participate are further damning their souls, and those who may be doing or bringing about an abortion for the first time have forfeited any grace of sanctification that they may have had. And so the victories are many in every single instance of an abortion, which numbers now in the tens of millions since its legalization. For 46 years we have been marching against abortion, and yet it still persists in our laws and in practice. Because it is something more than human, it is preternatural, as I've just explained. In my pastor's corner this week, and I hope you take the bulletin home, I recount the story of a man who knows firsthand of the preternatural activity of the demons in the matter of abortion. It is a man who is now Catholic by conversion, but early in life he was abused as a boy, and as a teen he gave himself over to Satan. As he grew older, he grew up and became more powerful with great prestige within Satanism, that is, those who do worship Satan rising to the level of being a high wizard in charge of a satanic temple. And he himself recounts, now that he has been converted, converted by the intercession of the Blessed Mother, he recounts that for him to be fully initiated into Satanism, it was required that he participate in a ritual abortion. And that any time thereafter, when the faithful, so-called, of Satan would desire something of the preternatural world, that they were required to offer a ritual abortion. Because Satan loves to destroy innocence. The innocence of the womb and others who would forfeit grace in the process. Every abortion is a victory for Satan. Ultimately, Providence rescued this man from the world of Satan, and the preternatural. He uh, came into contact with someone who provided him with a Marian medal who had been praying for him 
and through her intercession, he converted to Catholicism. And what he says now to anyone who will listen is this, abortion cannot be stopped by merely human efforts. It is a spiritual warfare. And he speaks from his testimony, his own personal experience, that many abortions are actually satanic sacrifices. So this man will spend the rest of his life atoning for his terrible sins, but forgiven for them by the grace of God and telling anyone who would listen what is at the base and heart of abortion. My friends, in today's gospel, we have it recounted the miraculous transformation of mere water into wine at the wedding feast of Cana. This was done by the miraculous powers of Jesus Christ, but it's fair to speculate that had not the Blessed Mother interceded at that wedding celebration and brought it to the attention of her son as a form of prayer or intercession, if you will, that water may never have become wine. And that first public miracle and manifestation of Christ's glory may never have been seen on that occasion. And so we see the incredible intercessory powers of the Blessed Mother that merely by bringing something to the attention of her son, her son would not refuse her and transform that water into so much of the finest wine. The March for Life and other efforts must go on and should go on. We must witness to the world that we will never give up on this point unless and until abortions are ended and made to be the crime that they are. So we keep up our marches, we keep up voting with well-formed consciences to elect those who are pro-life and to reject those who are pro-abortion by other means, to do what we can, humanly speaking. But we must not neglect the spiritual as well, as that former wizard who served Satan knows so well. It is not merely by these means that we can change these current status, but it will be through supernatural power that can always crush and defeat the preternatural fallen world. Toward that end, I ask that you would please kneel down now. I would like to conclude this reflection by offering three Hail Marys for an end to abortion. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.